Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my breastfeeding journey. To start off, when I first found out that I was pregnant, I knew right from the beginning that I wanted to breastfeed. That was one of my biggest goals that I was really, really hoping I could do because I know there are some girls that can't breastfeed and don't produce enough milk, the babies don't latch, different things could go wrong. So that was one of my biggest things was I really, really wanted to breastfeed. While I was pregnant, I did a lot of research on what to do to increase your supply, how to get the right latch, just a lot of things on breastfeeding. Um, I also did a lot of research on like the HACA and getting like um, a freezer stash, you know? So there was a lot of things I was researching while I was pregnant about breastfeeding and I was also watching a lot of videos like I'm making right now um, about breastfeeding and people's experiences, their journeys, their tips, different things like that, Q&As. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and put my own experience on my channel because that's what was really helpful to me the most when I was pregnant was seeing people's experiences, hearing their stories and all of that. So I wanted to go ahead and put my story out there as well. So after he was born, we did skin to skin almost right away. There was a few minutes where they took him to clean him and weigh him, all of that. But they did bring him back almost right away, like I said. And we did skin to skin. And then a little bit after that, we went ahead and tried breastfeeding for the first time. And I was so happy that he latched right away. It was like a weight lifted off of my shoulders because like I said, that's what I really, really wanted to do was breastfeed. And so when he latched, I was really excited. He ate right away. He didn't have a perfect latch, but he still latched on. So that was all I wanted really at that time. So that was like the best thing ever. While we were at the hospital, he did not have any formula at all. I just kept breastfeeding. I had an app where I would keep track of the times and which side he would feed off of as well. That way when the nurses came in, I could tell them everything, all the details about breastfeeding. And that worked out for a while. And I did keep up with that app for maybe like the first two, three months, I think. But I did have that app to help me keep track of everything. Then I think it was like day two in the hospital when a lactation consultant came in and I had a really horrible experience with the lactation consultant. I'm not gonna make the story very long. If you guys want a story time, comment down below that you want the full story and I'll do another video because it's pretty long. But basically she told me that I wouldn't be successful at breastfeeding if I didn't have an electric pump. And it was just a really, really bad story. So they brought the electric pump over to the room that way I could see how much milk I was producing at that time and those little hospital bottles I think they're like this big I filled up half of them in like 10 minutes both sides so the nurse was telling me that that was really really good and I knew that the lactation consultant didn't know what she was talking about she was older though, so that could have been part of it but like I said that's a whole nother story um, so I was producing a lot of milk and it was a good amount um, and then another nurse had told me that they noticed like the latch wasn't that good and I noticed it too and she let me know that a nipple shield could help and so she gave me one and I put it on and it did help a lot because basically the nipple is just really long on the nipple shield so it's easier for the baby to put it towards the back of their mouth and so that helped a lot and we used the nipple shield for about two months and then after that I took it away and he had a great latch after that so it really helped him learn how to get a good latch and for a good while I did use the Hakka so I would have him feed on one side and then use the Hakka on the other side and that's how I would build my freezer stash was whatever I collected from the Hakka basically and I would put that in the freezer then at about three yeah, at about three months postpartum is when I went back to work, but I only went back to work for two weeks for a lot of other reasons too, 
but one of the reasons is because the pumping schedule was so hard while being at work because basically I would wake up, I would get ready, I would take him to my mom's, drop him off. When I dropped him off, I would feed him before I left, go to work, then like in the middle of my shift in the morning, I would go pump. Then at lunch, I would go back to my mom's, breastfeed him, go back to work. Then somewhere in the middle of that shift, I would pump again and then leave work, go breastfeed him, bring him home, and breastfeed the rest of the night. So it was like a really weird schedule, and the pumping part was like the worst part because you have all those parts that you have to clean, you have to put it in the bag, you have to mark it, how many ounces and everything. So if you are a working mom that pumps, or if you exclusively pump, moment of silence for you because that is hard work. So, good job to you, because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do that. I only exclusively breastfed because pumping was just way too hard and too much for me and I couldn't handle it, so I just breastfed. That was it. So after I stopped working is when I stopped pumping, essentially, and I also kind of got lazy and stopped using the haka, so that was kind of bad, but I didn't need a freezer stash for anything because I wasn't working, so, it kind of worked out for me, but that was just in my own experience. So I did go through a few dips in supply, but I never ran out, um, and I was never really worried about running out. There was one time where I kind of got a little bit scared because I did notice that I wasn't producing a lot, but I just did some like of the tricks and stuff that they tell you to do to increase your supply, and that worked. Um, I think also he was going through like a growth spurt at that time, so he was trying to tell my body to make more. Another hard part is that he did get teeth around nine months, I think, and he started biting me. So that was a fun part. But what I did to kind of stop him from that is I would notice the times he did it is when he was done eating. So I would try basically to catch him before he's not before, but like when he's done eating, I take him off right away. That way he won't start biting me. Or like when he would start biting, I would just like take him away and put on like my stuff and everything and tell him no, he can't do that basically. That he's not going to get any more if he's going to bite me. Because he was already done eating. It's not like I was forcing him not to eat, you know? So that's what I would do when he stopped now. He doesn't really bite me anymore. If he does, it's like... I don't know where just because he wants to like I don't know how to explain it it's weird but yeah you don't want breastfeeding baby to bite you because it hurts a lot one of the biggest mistakes that I did was I started noticing that I had more milk on the left side so I would feed him more often on the left side because I was more engorged but that was a really big mistake. I should have just kept moving him back and forth, back and forth. Because now, I have a lot of supply on my left side. And like, not a lot on my right side. So, if you're a breastfeeding mom, you know the difference. And it's not something you want. Because one's really small, one's really big. So, you know, that's awkward. But, whatever. I don't care. Um, I just know for next time and I kind of try to get him back but I mean kind of already happened so it's hard to get back um, but I know for next time that I breastfeed I won't just stick to one side anymore I'll go back and forth back and forth and when he turned one I reached my goal of wanting to breastfeed him until he turned one so I was really really excited about that and I was so happy that I was able to achieve that goal. Like I said, that was one of the biggest things that I hoped for was to breastfeed in at least a year. So we got that out of the way. So excited. Um, but now that we made it to a year, everybody's asking me like, what are my plans? When am I gonna stop breastfeeding and all of that? So before he turned one, I basically told everybody that once he turned one, I was going to wean him off and only do like morning and night feeds. But now that we're here, it's kind of like I feel bad doing that to him because I think he's not ready. He still wants milk all the time. Not all the time, but he still wants milk more than just morning and night. So I think what I'm going to do now that I'm here at past the one year mark 
is we're going to um, let him wean himself off. So I'm hoping that he does that before he gets two years old. Um, but if he doesn't, then maybe that's when I'll do like cold turkey, take it away. But we'll see. For now, I'm just going to let him take control when I can tell he's hungry and wants milk. Then that's when I'll give him some. If he doesn't want it for a long period of time, then I won't give it to him. But it's kind of just all in his control right now. I'm hoping, like I said, he does wean himself off because I don't want to be the one taking it away from him. I want him to be ready for it. So that's my biggest thing right now. But that's pretty much it for my breastfeeding journey. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want another video as well about tips and tricks or breastfeeding Q&A, anything like that, let me know down below. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll be back.